Well, tomorrow's new comic book day. Let's take a look at what's coming out so I can tell you what's on the pull list. Welcome back to Comics Are Dope. I'm BJ Kicks, and this is The Pull List. It's my weekly video series where I take a look at the books coming out. I'll tell you what is on my pull list, what's on the chopping block, and some other books that maybe should be on your radar, even if they're not on mine. And I always like to start these with the book that I am most excited about. But first, huge thanks to everybody that participated in our 10,000 subscriber giveaway live stream. Um, as you can see, I've still got a bunch of stuff that... It's just going to have to be given away at a later date. Just wasn't feasible all at once. And so I've decided that what I'm going to do is bring back the monthly channel giveaways. So for channel members at either tier, uh, there will be a monthly giveaway typically held on the last week of the month. I'm just going to draw a name. It won't be like a separate video or anything, but then stay tuned to the community tab to see who the winners are. Uh, there's all sorts of like, it'll be a prize pack. So you won't, you'll never know what the prize is, but I've got all kinds of trade paper bags and single issues and things that I think would be better served uh, for someone else to be able to enjoy, um, which does not mean they're not good things. Like anyway, too much time spent on that. Let's talk about the book that I am most, most excited about. And this week, that is Feral, issue number one. Feral, written by Tony Fleeks with art by Tris Forstner. Trish, Trish Forstner. Trish Forstner, a great Forstner. Um, but anyway, Trish Forstner. Um, <laughs> and colors by Brad Simpson. This is the team that brought you Stray Dogs, which you might remember from my best of 2021, one, one two and a half years ago. Anyway, this team is back. And instead of doing a, a series about dogs or stray dogs, we're getting a series about feral cats. Uh, and basically this is a zombie apocalypse set in like a Don Bluth animations type world. So basically there is uh, a rabies outbreak and we're going to follow this group of cats as they uh, try to survive it. Think the walking dead. I'm excited about it. Uh, I loved Stray Dogs so much. So I'm really excited to return to a similar world. I, as far as I'm understanding, this is not like a direct sequel. It doesn't necessarily take place in the same universe or whatever, but it is absolutely a spiritual successor and an awesome follow up to the Stray Dog series that I'm excited to take a look at. Cover price on this one is $3.99. I'm grabbing cover A. By the way, Tony Fleeks did stop by the podcast last week to talk about Feral, as well as some other books he's got coming up in the next month or so that I think are really excited and worth listening and checking out. So check out that interview on the podcast. It's on all the podcast streaming platforms. And by the way, full video episodes are also available to our channel members. So just another reason to join. But anyway, let's talk about the next book that I'm excited about on the list. And since we're talking about indie comics, we'll go with The Six Fingers issue number two. The Six Fingers, written by Dan Waters with art by, I don't remember who the artist is. Is, is it Lawrence? Now I got to look it up. Sumit Kumar. Sumit Kumar is on the art uh, with Aditya Bidikar on letters. Anyway. The Six Fingers uh, is basically like a, a sister series to The One Hand. The One Hand being a detective story. This guy uh, who's just about to retire is like pulled back in. He's brought right back in because the serial killer that he thought he locked away apparently has struck again. And it doesn't appear to be a copycat. So he's going to go figure out just what happened. Um, and in The One Hand, or excuse me, and in The Six Fingers, uh, basically we're following that person who's committing the serial killings and the indications we got from issue one were that he doesn't quite know that he is the serial killer. So there's a really interesting, like sort of supernatural element there. Uh, that's, that's worth following, uh, between the two series so far, I think the one hand might've lost a step with issue two, but the six fingers, uh, was really fun last issue. So I'm excited to see how it goes this issue. And if it makes me view the one hand number two differently, trying to keep track of these titles as I keep switching back and forth, 
crazy. The point is, grab the one hand from Ram V, grab the six fingers from Dan Waters. They are five issues each. You'll be excited by them. Cover price on this one is $3.99. I'm grabbing cover A. And the last book on the indie pull list this week is from Sean Murphy. This is uh, Zorro, Man of the Dead, issue number three. So it's basically a Zorro book set in modern times. This dude, Diego, like basically had a psychotic break and thinks he's Zorro, like the literal folk hero Zorro. And his sister is like, yo, like you're not Zorro. Like you are a child's plaything. You are a t not a toy. You're a grown man that's not Zorro, though. And it's the hijinks ensue. And it's funny because it's Zorro, but he's like misplaced in time. This dude's trying to fight with a sword and a fox and stuff, and he's fighting against the drug cartel who have heavy artillery. But it's been a really fun book. I think they won me over with the fact that there's a dude in the book named Trejo who looks like Danny Trejo. It's just great. It's just a fun comic. And Sean Gordon Murphy's art is just awesome. It makes you wish we got more Batman stuff from him. But I mean, we've had plenty. I just kind of want more. So if you're wanting to scratch that Sean Gordon Murphy itch, definitely grab Zorro Man of the Dead. Issue three is out this week with a cover price of $4.99. I'm grabbing cover A. And that's it for the indie comics on the poll list this week. As long as I stick to the list, those are just going to cost me $13. So $13, not bad. So Pretty light week so far, and especially as we head over to DC Comics, where there's only one book on the poll list, and that is Detective Comics 1083. Speaking of Rom V and Dan Waters, they are both writing on this book. Um, I didn't write down the artists, but you guys know, I tell you this like every two weeks, I'm still behind on Detective Comics. It has honestly read better to me like in binges. And so I haven't really been in a rush to catch up with it. Um, I still need to finish the Batman outlaw uh, storyline. So that shows where I am here. We're three issues past that, as far as I can tell. Anyway, cover price on Detective Comics 1083 is four ninety nine. I'm grabbing cover A. And that's the only DC comic on the pull list this week. So my DC total is $5, which means I'm only spending $18 so far this week. And you would think that was a light week until you got to my Marvel list. So let's take a look at the House of Ideas and all the things on the pull list this week. And um, yeah, we're going to start. <laughs> we're going to start with. The Amazing Spider-Man issue 46. Now, I told you guys two weeks ago that I was dropping The Amazing Spider-Man after issue 45, and I was supposed to be recording a video telling you exactly why. And then I read The Amazing Spider-Man 45, and my thoughts on it, I couldn't summarize well enough. I recorded that video twice, and twice it was 20 minutes of me ranting about what's happened in The Amazing Spider-Man so far and what happened in the last issue. Overall, my my opinion is a little bit more tame now that I've gone through it twice than it was before. Ultimately, The Amazing Spider-Man is moving too slow, like way too slow, but they are doing some interesting things and they're doing just enough to like kind of quell your suspicions or your concerns uh, before they become overwhelming. Right. But my biggest gripe against the Amazing Spider-Man, besides the pacing, is usually the art. The John Romita Jr. artwork just doesn't always fit my sensibilities. Well, every time I feel like I've read too much John Romita Jr., they switch up the artist for a story arc. And for issue 45, 46, I think all the way up through 50, we are getting uh, Carmen Carnello on artwork, who, by the way, just got uh, assigned the X exceptional X-Men uh, with Eve Ewing. So she's going to be drawing an X-Men book. And is she, is she? Carmen is a unisex name. So let's just be sure. Okay. Carmen Carnero is a girl, uh, a woman, a female, I, whatever. <laughs> Carmen is drawing uh, The Amazing Spider-Man. Issue 45 looked great. As far as the, the overall plot, the story, there's a few threads that have been dangling that just are still dangling. Uh, Tombstone 
is going to like try to kill Spider-Man at some point. The Green Goblin is probably going to return because issue 50 has him on the cover. Uh, Spider-Man and Mary Jane are still like uh, just awkwardly awkward, like excruciatingly awkward with each other. And the Sinister Stick Six are making an appearance again, uh, which is why Electro is on the cover of this one. Cover price on uh, Amazing Spider-Man 46, which I am grabbing because I think I want to read this through issue 50. Uh, it's $4.99 and I'm grabbing cover A. Next up, uh, a Spider-Man book that I don't have to convince myself to buy every month. This is Miles Morales Spider-Man issue 18. By the way, issue 18 of uh, Miles Morales is issue 300 in legacy numbering. And because of that, we're getting a double size 72 page issue that is going to cost nine dollars. And I wish I knew that before I pre-ordered just based on the cover. I absolutely pre-ordered an extra cover because I like the cover A on this book, but I also like the cover B. And now I've got to like go to the shop and be like, dang, sorry guys, like, can you keep this $9? And anyway, Miles Morales, uh, it's funny how different this book is when it's not being tied into some overarching Marvel event because issue 17 was flames absolute fire Rab rabble is back um there are some other people that might be joining up with rabble to take down miles especially in the wake of one of the big takeaways from the gang war uh so it, all of it matters it's all mattered but there's something about when cody ziggler is able to just write without having to include specific characters or whatever whatever I also love the little champions reunion we got with Miles Morales and uh, Kamala Khan. And so that's been cool. Anyway, the point is Miles Morales is really, really dope right now, which makes me not even mind the fact that this book is going to be nine dollars. But whatever, hopefully, hopefully it keeps up the momentum. Then again, we are just like two issues away from being <laughs> interrupted for the blood hunt. So there's that. Miles Morales, 18 or 300 out this week with the cover price of $8.99. I'm grabbing, I don't know which cover I'm grabbing, but I showed you both. Next up, Rise of the Powers of 10, issue number three. Rise of the Powers of 10, Fall of the House of X. I, it's not even that it's uninteresting. It's just dragging out too long. Like the fact that this book is monthly, when I feel it should be bi-weekly and we should just be speeding toward the end of the Krakoa era, takes away from the fact that even what's going on in the pages is fairly interesting and compelling. I just don't feel compelled to keep up with it like as often as it's coming out. So I'm an issue behind on Rise as well as Fall, but We'll get caught up. We'll get caught up and then we'll talk about it as the Krokoa Empire collapses. Uh, cover price on this one is $4.99. Grabbing cover A. Uh, no, I'm not. I'm grabbing the connecting variant. This time the connecting variant is by is it Paolo Segura. I don't want to misquote, but it's down there. Now that I've said whatever I said, that was probably the wrong thing. Anyway, next up on the pull list is uh, of a great book, probably my favorite at Marvel right now. This is Ultimate Spider-Man issue number three. Ultimate Spider-Man written by Jonathan Hickman with art by Marco Kiketo. I think that's how you say his name. Yo, this book is dope. Like if you haven't read the first two issues, go back and get like the second and third printings because I'm sure those will be on the shelf along with this week's issue three it's ultimate spider-man like this is like if your expectation about the ultimate universe is that it's going to be familiar yet very different that's exactly what you get with this ultimate spider-man title the art is amazing one thing i am waiting to see uh because spoiler alert we have not seen the official Spider-Man suit, or at least we haven't seen the classic red and blue suit yet, although we've seen it on every cover so far. So hopefully the classic red and blue makes an appearance in this issue. Issue three out this week with a cover price of $4.99. Grabbing cover A. 
Well, let's hop back over to the X-Men universe, because apparently all I read is Spider-Man and X-Men at Marvel. Next up on the pull list is Wolverine issue 46, part six of the Sabretooth War, which could easily not be a part of this whole Krakoa thing. And in fact, it's really not. You could read this without reading any of the fall of the House of X or any of that stuff, which is cool. And ultimately, it's just big action pieces, which is also cool from a Wolverine book. I think it's just if you've been reading Wolverine by Ben Percy, this feels like something that we haven't really gotten a chance to get just high action with probably Wolverine's most popular uh, nemesis. So it's exciting. It just doesn't feel like it matters. And I think that's why it also falls to the bottom of the reading pile. But cover price on this is four ninety nine. I'm grabbing cover A. Honestly, going to be sad to see Benjamin Percy go because he's leaving with issue 50. And speaking of 50 issues, next up on the pull list is X-Force issue 50, which as far as I can tell, is also Ben Percy's final issue of X-Force before it relaunches later this year. Um, we haven't gotten the creative team, but we have seen that the title is coming back. But Ben Percy on X both X-Force and Wolverine has probably been the most consistent writer of the Krakoa era, like both series have been pretty good all the way through. I think interrupting, we can talk, we can do a postmortem of the Krakoa era, like after it's finally done. But I just feel like as these things are starting to wind down, some of this stuff kind of feels like missed opportunities. And it felt like, feels like we highlighted the wrong things in retrospect. Anyway, X-Force 50, final issue of the run. I love, love, love that cover A. And that's what I'm getting with a cover price of $3.99. Yeah. Yeah. That's it for the Marvel Comics on the pull list. Uh, so as long as I stick to the list, my Marvel books are going to cost me $33 this week, which is more than the other two publishers <laughs> groups combined. So there's that whole lot of X-Men a whole lot of Spider-Man and Miles Morales being a double price book doesn't help my total or my efforts at all. Let's talk about uh, the grand total. My grand total this week is $51. I have maxed out the budget. So these books that I have on my radar are going to have to stay on my radar, except I am making an exception for X-Men 97 issue number one. Now, honestly, I put this on the pull list as an excuse to talk about X-Men 97, because if you haven't seen those first two episodes, watch them. Or maybe you'll even want to wait until tomorrow morning, new comic book day to watch all three because issue episode three will be out tomorrow. Watch X-Men 97. It is so good. I wanted to write this off as just like a nostalgia grab from the rip. Episode one, by the time you get to that final fight scene, you're like, I am hooked on this show. And then episode two, like, is even better like the with the the uh, people are going to like complain that it's woke or whatever whatever right but the the subtext that they put in the show the fact that they make it relevant about a world that's hated and feared there's a, a moment between storm and gene gray that is excellent um and yeah some stuff happens in issue or episode two that i'm really like what <laughs> so x-men 97 great animated series but let's talk about this comic this comic i wasn't going to buy because it's listed as a prelude to the animated series and i'm like usually preludes come out before the thing that they're a prelude to but apparently this is like teasing a bunch of storylines that are going to be relevant throughout the course of the animated series so it's not like watching episode one negates your reading of this so it'll be a four issue miniseries and I'm definitely grabbing it. Cover price on it is $4.99. Another book on the radar uh, this week. Batman Dark Age, issue number one. If you remember Superman Space Age, this is the same creative team. Mark Russell is writing it. Mike and Gloria all read. Is it Gloria or Laura? Mike and Laura all read <laughs> are uh, handling the arts duties. And hey, it's Batman with the Superman Space Age team. I have a policy. I just don't buy Batman black label books anymore because it's too much like regular continuity ba Batman stuff. So I'll wait until it's collected. 
this will probably end up like Batman 89 and Superman 78 for me, where they're going to get bundled together. People are going to talk about how much they love both of them. I'm going to have to buy both just because. But for now, the issue is out this week with the cover price of $5.99, which honestly isn't even bad for a black label book. Cover A is dope. There's also a really dope cover C by Frank Quitely. And quite frankly, I'm kind of mad that I don't buy black label books because I would buy that cover, but I'm not going to fall for the trap. $5.99. Next up, an indie book to look out for this week. Sam and Twitch Case Files issue number one uh, out this week. I want to say Todd McFarlane is writing it. Uh, the, the draw to me is that it's got art by Zyman Kudransky, who you might know from uh, something epic. Um, knew I had this laying around. So this is something epic. This is the trade paperback. And there's I can't do this justice on camera without like the point is Zyman Kudransky has got a really, really nice style and he's great at like portraying like sort of dark and noir type things, even like sort of supernatural things, which is exactly what the Spawn universe is. Um, Sam and Twitch Case Files being the latest in a series of uh, Spawn universe expansion titles. I think there's going to be up like nine more Spawn titles when it's all said and done. I have no interest in all of those, but Sam and Twitch case files looks cool. Cover price on it is $2.99. Why not at $2.99? Why does nobody else do $2.99 books? Riddle me that, DC. Anyway, those are all the books on the radar. Let me know what you're checking out in the comments down below. Huge shout out to the channel family uh, for making content on this channel possible and giving me a little bit of money to spend on the pull list. I'll see you guys in another video soon. Till then, stay safe. Stay awesome and uh, read something dope today. Peace. We're looking at a pretty light week, especially heading over to DC Comics, you know, brand. Eh. <laughs>